Hello, good morning, everyone. I'm Eva Medelec, your high performance coach, and I am here to share some things that I hope will help you improve, enrich, and enhance the quality of not only your personal life, but your professional life as well. So here's what I am going to talk about today. You know, and I usually bring up issues that um, my clients are having in real life and in real time. And, you know, they're, what I hear a lot is about, you know, when you make that decision to improve your life and your health, what happens when the people around you don't get it? They don't seem to be supporting you. They're wondering, you know, for example, you know, why can't you just have one bite of cake, one cookie, one slice of cake? Um, that's not like you. Why are you getting up? Why are you going to bed early? Why don't you feel like going out? Why not? Why aren't you drinking? Um, all of those things can put pressure on you to succumb so that you don't disappoint other people or they don't look at you as weird, strange, or different. And even though you have that intention to, you know, improve your health, improve your well-being, um, improve your situation, whatever it is, when those around you, whether it's spouse, whether it's sibling, whether it's parents, whether it's coworkers, are not enrolled and 100% behind you, it can be difficult to stick to your guns, if you will. And I probably shouldn't use that term, I apologize, but it, it the willpower, you know, your environment is stronger than your willpower. And if the people around you are not supporting you and they're saying things like, you know, come on, it's just one drink. Come on, it's just one piece of cake, one piece of cookie. Um, come on, stay up a little bit longer. Watch this Netflix show with me. Or why are you getting up so early to go to the gym? You know, all of those things that I think we've all had people say to us when we have, you know, our intention and our goal to like, I'm going to wake up early every day. I'm going to hit the gym. I'm going to go for a walk, a run, do a workout. I'm not going to drink, you know, have a glass of wine every night with dinner we can feel pressure from the people around us to conform to the old version of ourselves that we are looking to improve. And so a lot of people are thinking, well, I don't want people to think differently about me, to think bad about me, to think negatively about me. I don't want to disappoint others. You know, let me have the glass of wine with my spouse or my partner so they don't feel alone in their drinking. Let me split a dessert. Not saying any of these things are wrong, so please don't hear that. My point in, in sharing that is if you made the decision not to, and you're often met with a snarky comment or a disappointed look, or maybe you get accused of, that's like she's scratching her, her neck. <laughs> uh, maybe you get accused of being boring or old because you're going to bed early. I'm here to just share with you, don't let those comments take you away from your goal because you know why. You want to be happier. You know why you want to be healthier. You you know why you want your energy to be at a certain level when you wake up in the morning and not feeling the effects of too much food, eating too late, drinking you know too much. We all know that we feel better when we make healthy choices for ourselves. So how do you stick with your intentions and your goals when the people around you are maybe saying things that may hurt your feelings or they don't understand. I'll, sh I'll share a quick story with you. A number of years ago, I think it was 2018, I was training for an endurance challenge. Um, I was in a group coaching with Jesse Itzler and um, 
we were being coached every week by him. You know, we had these certain amount of workouts we had to do. And I was also traveling a lot for work. And um, I think I was still working as a dental hygienist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I hadn't retired yet. So I was working my full-time job. I was still building my real estate company. And I was traveling, speaking about real estate and investments and training for this um, this endurance challenge. And we didn't know what the challenge would be, but what we got was like every week or every 10 days, we got a new set of exercises or workouts that we needed to do, whether it was burpees or running on a treadmill or doing jumping jacks, we had kind of a set things to do. And so the challenge for me was to create the time, the space to do that. So I could least, you know, perform halfway decent when we got to the location and did the challenge, which we still didn't know what it was. And so what I ended up doing was getting up an hour earlier to go to the gym. I was part of Equinox at the time and I would go to the gym and I would, you know, print out that little piece of paper that, you know, with all of the reps and things that I had to do and and do that. And I remember one time uh, my husband and I were at an event and and I, we were just in a group of people talking and I, I heard him say to somebody, yeah, my wife is crazy. She's getting up at 5.30 in the morning, going to the gym, working out. It's absolutely crazy. It's absolutely nuts. And I remember that feeling of my heart sinking. I'm like, wow, he thinks this is crazy. What I'm doing, you know, I'm pushing myself 50 something years old to compete with with people in their 20s, 30s, 40s and younger than me. And and I really want to give it my all. I'm thinking about it now and it literally brought tears to my eyes. And I had to have a conversation with him. And I didn't have a conversation that shamed him or guilted him because some people think that that's humorous. And I know that was intention. He didn't go out to intentionally hurt my feelings, but I had to let him know how I felt hearing him say those words. And, you know, I was scared. I'll be honest. I was scared. You know, what is he going to say? How is he going to react? Is he going to get an attitude? Is he going to shut down? Is he going to say, you know, I'm, I'm even more crazy. I don't know how to take a joke, relax, calm down. You know, all of the things people can say when we confront them with how we feel about something we say or said or something they said or did. And, you know, bless him. He was very gracious and said, you know, it's not my intention to hurt you. I'm really sorry. I won't do that again. I had no idea. And I let him know. And the next time he had an opportunity to talk about my endurance challenge, he did it from a place of pride and bragging. I'm so proud of my wife. She gets up at 5.30 every morning to train for this endurance challenge she's doing in the spring. And how amazing is that? And we switched the conversation to where he was proud of me, where he was actually lifting me up. And that lift up encouraged me to get keep going. So here's what I suggest if you're ever in a situation where you're making a change in your life and it feels like the people around you don't get it or are not being supportive or are saying jokes about it and, and it makes you feel bad or you might give in because you don't want to disappoint people because you know they want to go out and party and you want to go to bed early so that you get your eight hours of sleep, whatever the situation is. I want to encourage people to really be in a place where they're communicating what they feel when people say things to them. You know, the way I said it to my husband is like, I know it's not your intention to hurt me, but when you say things like that, you know, I feel a pain in my heart and I feel like you're not taking what I'm doing seriously. It doesn't feel supportive and it actually hurts me. It makes me sad. I actually feel sad. I I use I statements. I'm not saying you said this and you made me feel that. that, So you want to be careful from the you statements to the I statements. I feel bad when I hear that. I feel, you know, upset, disappointed, hurt, whatever your feelings are when I hear words like that spoken as opposed to you hurt me when you said that. Do you see the difference here? 
there's a distinction. You hurt me when you said that. You hurt my feelings. It gets accusatory. And what happens is people, because they feel embarrassed because they hurt you, they become defensive. I mean, embarrassment is a huge motivator for people to be in denial and defensive. It's not that they're trying to be mean, it's that they're trying to save face, if you will. So think about it that way. And if you just put the onus on you, I feel hurt when I hear X, Y, and Z. I don't feel supported when, when I hear the words blah, blah, blah. All right. I, I hope that helps because the people in your life, I'm like 100% sure that they love you, care for you, respect you, you and want the best for you. But they don't, don't always know how to show it. And you don't have to give in so that you don't hurt their feelings. But you can advocate for yourself and for the support that you need. Like, darling, I have a goal to release 10 pounds of body fat in the next two months. And because of that, I'm not going to be buying cookies and cakes and potato chips or whatever at the supermarket. And I would appreciate it if you wouldn't bring that stuff into the house so that you could support me in this. I'm not saying you have to, don't have to eat it and, and you don't have to be on the same diet as me. But I need your help because I have a tendency to succumb to temptation. So as much help and support as you can give me in my goal. If I hit the snooze button and I want to get up at 5.30 and you hear the alarm and I didn't get out of bed, please give me that nudge. Tell me I can do it. Tell me I got this. I need help and support. And I'd appreciate you helping me in reaching my goal. And it's just that simple. It's just that simple. We get upset and disappointed that we don't get what we want in life because we haven't learned how to ask for support and help in getting what we want in life. All right. That's all I got for you today, everyone. Thank you for watching either live or on the replay. People who have joined live, I see you. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for being here. And those of you on the replay, please put in the comments what you think about this, you know, what's coming up for you, what you can do differently. And go to my YouTube channel, evametalek.com forward slash YouTube and subscribe. So in case you miss any of the live broadcasts or interviews, not interviews, uh, my brain is in another place, <laughs> any live broadcasts, you can go back and watch the replays and share them out if you know somebody who needs to hear this message. All right. Thanks for watching. Uh, see you next week. Okay. Have a great one. Bye.